So a casting director is someone who finds actors to be in television, film, or theater, right? They are the one who finds the actor. So just like if your mom or dad was applying for a job, yeah. they would submit a resume and then someone from that company would call your mom and dad in for an interview. Yeah. That is what a casting director does. Essentially, uh, for the older students, a casting director is human resources. That's what they are. Um, mm -hmm. And then the casting associate is the casting director's right hand, right? Mm -hmm. So a casting director, if you were to think about it in terms of a company, a casting director would, would handle like work talking to executives. They are the executive in the company. They're the boss, right? They are the, the one who goes out and gets the contracts. They're the, which means like the other projects or the other TV shows or the other movies. Then the casting associate runs the office, right? So yeah. the casting associate makes sure that auditions are set up, that deals are correct, um, that all the information is collected, that we write with SAG, which is <laughs> the um, union. And then there's a casting assistant who kind of helps the associate mm -hmm. and, and will serve as a reader. So like when you come in and do an audition, you need to read with somebody. The yeah. casting assistant would be the one that does that with the, the, with the actor. Yeah, got you. So what were some of the valuable skills that you pulled out of that space that helped you be a better actress? Or were there any transferable skills? Oh, oh my goodness. So while casting was not my path, it's an amazing path, a lucrative path too. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Won't he do it? Uh, if there's money in casting, uh, even if they tell you that there's not. There is. Um, so some of the transferable skills, I really learned how to become a businesswoman in casting because I got a chance to operate with contracts. Okay. I got a chance to operate with the union, which is major. Even though I worked in a right to work state, which basically means that um, you can really, you don't have to do union projects. Okay. I was able to see what a union contract looked like. I was able to hear conversations to know how to close a union deal. Right. I was able to um, learn about Taft Hartley's and like paperwork and um, how to how to close an actor. I really learned what those conversations were and what those conversations were about um, and how you have those conversations. How that has helped me and what my path is, is I have so much grace for my team mm -hmm. because my, my manager and my my agent as an actress, I have so much grace. Yeah. But also, I'm able to maintain my position as the CEO of Geraldine Pictures because I'm able to identify when you're telling me something that's not right, yeah. right? Or yeah. if you tell me that a casting director said something, mm -hmm. I can go back and say, hey, Brad, that's my manager, say this in return, right? And then I can get what I need. Um, and it maybe didn't work once because people are different, but anytime I've needed to pivot, I've really been able to lean on that experience. Absolutely. And that's helpful for us. And I'm sure as a casting director and in that space, people probably did some wild things yeah. to get your attention, ah. um, like the audience is doing right now. And so we're going to open it up to get at least three questions in. Um, we have three. Yep. We have one right here. Um, why do you like, uh, why do you like, um, um, the ancestors. Why do I like ancestors? Oh, what a beautiful question. Uh, so, so in 2020, I lost my dad and my brother three weeks apart. And I was desperate mm. to maintain that relationship with them. And I grew up in the church, still in the church, so I'm not knocking anything. But they don't teach you about ancestors, even though it's so ingrained in, in our DNA. And that connection to ancestors has helped me to keep my dad and brother alive. I'm actually much closer to my brother in his current home than I am than I was when he was here. Strangely, but I love ancestors because they are the real connectors. Yeah. Whoever this is resonating with, that's not, you're, it's not me. That's ancestors. And also, if you were to think about a path, right? God establishes the path. Ancestors clear the way. And that's why, that's why I'm so grateful to them. Yes, baby. You have a question? Uh, why do you love God? Why do I love God? 
I love God because God teaches me how to love me. Yeah. When I'm not loving me, I'm not loving God. Because someone said this to me when I was going through a, a period of time where I was so mad at God because he took my dad and my brother three weeks apart. And it's like, that don't make no sense. Yeah. It, it just didn't make sense to me. And I said, God feels so distant. And she had me go like this. She said, Brittany, go like this. And I was like, why? Because I had an attitude. She said, Brittany, go like this. It's like, okay. She said, you've been thinking of God as something that's up here, but really this is God right here. God is just this close. And that's why I love God, because he is truly, and, and I say he for y'all, I know that my God is a black woman with a pixie cut. <laughs> uh, but like God is seriously the friend that sticks closer to a brother. The only thing I can lean on. And really the only reason why, we're, why this, like this, you're looking at God. I'm, I am looking at God. Oh, my God. I'm looking at God. I'm looking at God and God's work. Every time I hug Christian, I feel God. Every time I see Terrell with that energy and that light, how can you not love that? Because that is God. Yeah. I think we got time for one more question. Me knowing you, I know you are a wealth of knowledge. So I have several questions for you. First, King. I'll make it quick, my answer, I promise. Thank you. <laughs> How can an actor who knows that training is imperative be very careful and cautious about being taken advantage of when they are going through their process? Because though training is necessary and training does cost money, how do you properly vet credible resources in order to become the best version of yourself? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. So yeah. the best way to know that you are not being taken advantage of is any reputable training facility has an, a teacher who's working. If that teacher is not actively working or retired and you can literally Google them and see a resume of credits that you recognize, it's probably not a good fit. Also, all you should be paying for is class. So I often see like, sign up, we'll take a class, and then we'll do headshots. 